Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Welcome back. This is the Open Vert TV, and we are back with another video for you. And I wanted to give a thanks to those who have subscribed to the channel. So everybody else, if it's your first time, hit that like button and that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. And you can also comment in the video. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any question, bring it up and I could possibly make a video about it in the future. Um, today's topic, we're going to talk about SOP. SOP means, it stands for the Spirit of Prophecy. The question was asked, why is it that some Seventh-day Adventists are not using the Spirit of Prophecy to a famous pastor, his name is Randy Skid. Let's see what he has to say about that. So, I'm going to go and let the man speak. All right. The question is, why are so many SDA church pastors not using the spirit of prophecy? Ellen White's writings, what are they afraid of? They're not afraid. Some of them do not have, they do not appreciate the value of the testimonies. And they may honestly not appreciate it. By God's grace, they may come to the place where they realize, oh, I have been depriving the church of a tremendous gold mine of spiritual wisdom. Some of them deliberately undermine L.O.I. Some of them don't believe in her as a prophet at all. All right, so I'm going to pause right here, guys. I wanted to mention something before we move on. Very, very important to know. I grew up in a Seventh Avenue home. We did have, you know, some of her, some of her book. I think we had the great controversy, the great controversy, last day event, step to Christ, steps to Christ, and some of the books. Um, I wasn't taught her book per se. Meaning, we had the books. We rarely read them because in uh, in in the in the in the SDA church, the majority of us. We don't cling to her writing as people outside of Seventh Avenueism think we do. They think we use her writing for everything. No. It's usually for specific things we use her writings. Um, because we believe that we have to use the Bible to defend our faith, not her writings. Now, the second thing is that um, I have seen people use her writing as if it is a Bible. And I'm like, wait, why is it 50 mentions of her writings and then three Bible verses? Like, come on, something is wrong with that. There are others, those that mean the, the first category are those that abuse is, of that abuse her writing. Like, they use it in a constant, constant basis. I'm thinking, do you not know your Bible? That's why you keep going to her writing every single time. But there are also those who flat out despises her writings. And they would not use her writing because they hate her writing. They don't believe in her writing the same way if you guys remember the story of Jeremiah in chapter 27, when God gave Jeremiah a prophecy to give to the king of Israel, I believe, um, king of Judah, Zedekiah, my bad, king of Judah, Zedekiah. Actually, you know what? Let me show you, let me quickly um, show you what I'm talking about. When God told, um, when God told, um, Jeremiah, hey, I want you to bring a message to the king of uh, to the king of um, Judah. In chapter twenty-seven, it is in the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, came the word the word of unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, "Thus says the Lord." Make the bonds of yokes and put them on your neck. Because he had a message to prophesy to the king of Joachim. But in chapter 28, 
we have a false prophet. So we had the prophet of God, Jeremiah, right? And God gave him a prophecy to the king of Judah. But then in, in chapter 28, we have in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, there was a false prophet called Hananiah who was saying the prophecy that Jeremiah spoke speak is a false prophecy and he broke the bond, the yoke of bone or wood that Jeremiah made. All that to say, there are those who despise the spirit of prophecy the same way in the time of Jeremiah, there were those who despised the prophecy that God had given to Jeremiah. Third, there are those like myself in the middle. We rarely use her writings. Like, if you guys watch my videos, you will barely see me using her writings. Now, I've made, uh, she has devotionals that I've made, you know, Steps to Christ, Sanctified Life, things like that. Those are devotionals. But when it comes to Bible study, you rarely see me go to her writings for Bible study. Because there has to be a balance, basically. So, what Pastor Randy Skid is talking about is there are those who actually flat out hate her writings and there are those who um, just don't know about her writings that much. So, let's see what else he has to say about that. I've gone to church where I was told we don't quote from Ellen White. I said, can I quote? He said, yes, but we don't. So I did. I was in a certain field in a certain part of the world. And a pastor in that conference told me that the local conference circulated a letter requesting that ministers sign to say, I will not quote Ellen White from the pulpit. Now, if you guys don't understand what this means, I will tell you. This is the same thing as in the case of Jeremiah. Do you see when in the in Jeremiah chapter twenty eight, when Jeremiah made the the yoke of wood, what did the false prophet Hananiah do? Bible continues to say, uh, "Where is it?" Okay, let's start verse number one. And it came to pass. The same year, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah king of Judah, in the fourth year and the fifth month, that Hananiah the son of Azar, the prophet, which was of Gibeon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the peace and of the people, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon took away from this place. And of course, he keeps on going and says, I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the counties of with all the counties of Judah that went into Babylon, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. And then Jeremiah said um, to the priest and to the, and to Hananiah, verse number six, Amen, the Lord do so, the Lord perform thy words, which thou hast prophesied to bring again the rest of the Lord's house, and all that is carried captive from Babylon into this place. Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I, have, I speak into your ears, into thine ears, and the people around you. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms, and of war, and of evil, and of pestilence. Prophet which prophesied of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall prophet, the prophet which prophesied of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. Then what did Hananiah do? Hananiah took the yoke of, from of took the yoke from of the prophet Jeremiah's neck and break it. So in a sense, what Pastor Randy Ski is saying is when the local conferences are saying do not use her writings, they are basically breaking her prophecy or her I would say they are kind of killing her in a sense or um, destroying her in a sense because 
they are trying to destroy her works or destroying her by because they cannot destroy her they are trying to do everything they can to destroy her works and I'm pretty sure that is not too far fetch it's a very serious thing it's not strange did not the Jews kill the prophets that's right mm -hmm. we're killing Ellen White it's no different God's, God's people, people are killing God's prophet yeah as I was saying, um, yeah, um, in a sense, you are killing, you know, the when you mention Jesus, when you mention the prophet Jesus, the heathen who have never heard of Jesus said, wait a minute, I find no fault in this guy, you know, like for them, like, um, like Pilate said, well, I find no fault in him. The heathen, when they first heard him speak, they're like, wait. I found no fault in him. The heathen, I should say the um, Gentiles, or I should say the non Adventists, who have never heard of Adventism, when they read her book, just by reading her book, when nobody else told her, told them who she was, they're like, wow, this person is inspired by God. But then those who are so called the religious, they are like in the of Jesus, saying, crucify him. While the heathen are like, well, I found no fault in him. So right now, same thing is applying over here. Those who have never heard of her, when they first read her book, just reading her book, without knowing who she is, they're like, man, that's great materials, and she's the most prophet of God. But then, the religious people are saying, crucify her. Do you see the difference? But let's see what else has to say. Let's see what else he has to say. Well, the ultimate killing of a prophet was the killing of Jesus. And the Roman said, I find no fault, I find no fault, I find no fault. The Roman said, Let this man go. The church said, mm -mm, Kill him. Mm. So it's not a surprise if the church will kill Jesus, they'll kill Ellen White. But let me recommend to you in the presence of a holy God, expose your mind to the writings of Ellen White. Expose your children to the writings of Ellen White. Your lives will change. Some young man wrote me two days ago. I'm spiritually this and spiritually that and uh, I'm going down the drain. Pray for me. Many times people don't need prayer. They just need to make a decision. I told him, read Steps to Christ chapter 5. He wrote me the next day, he said, I had never seen it, I've read the book before, I had never seen it that way. Immediately there was a change. I told him to follow up with chapter 6. He read it, he wrote back, I, I want to thank you. Uh, about two years ago someone wrote me, my life is on the decline spiritually, I have no desire for God. Uh, I told her, confess your sins, read Steps to Christ, chapter 5. The person wrote back. I have experienced a change. Mm -hmm. True story. Ellen White was a prophet as much as Isaiah or Jeremiah. Her writings don't qualify to be in the Bible, but the gift she has was the very gift Isaiah had. And her gift was given to her for this church, not the whole world, for this church to keep this church off the rocks of error. Mm -hmm. Satan knows that, so Satan gets into us and tries to break our confidence in the writings of Ella. And she has told us, those who deny her writings will eventually deny the Bible. That's because right. the source of authority is the same, the Spirit of God. She also says, those who believe in her testimonies will not be deceived in the time of trouble. Please, with God as my witness, Make time for the writings of his servant sent to be a blessing to this church. So, guys, <laughs> I don't know what else could be said about that. Um, as I mentioned, in, in Matthew chapter 
23 if I'm I would think that's right March, 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 20, March 23 and in verse number 37 this is Jesus lamenting over Jerusalem which is in a sense a church you know church type and he said O Jerusalem Jerusalem thou that killest the prophet and stoneth them which are sent unto thee how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Friends, I want you guys to know the issue about the spirit of prophecy and the writings of Ellen White. This is not a random thing happening. Satan, remember, is wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of a seed which is those who keep the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ that's chapter 12 verse 17 of Revelation and we know the testimony of Jesus Christ in chapter 19 verse 10 is the spirit of prophecy so there should be no doubt that Satan is attacking Ellen White by trying to destroy her writings even amongst us Seventh-day Adventists so hey but guys you know what I want you guys to know I don't want you to be uh, extreme right where you use where you use and abuse her writings every single five seconds is her writings her and her writings but I don't want you to be on the far left either or you just flat out want to destroy or burn her writing. In a sense, be in the middle. Be balanced. If you need to use it, use it. But if it's, if you are trying to overdo it, then be careful. That's not the way to go either. Her writing is supposed to be the lesser light in the Bible, the bigger light. Even she said that. If you don't believe her writing, just stay with the Bible. But if you do, don't misuse her writing either. Guys, I'm going to stop right here. This taking was the for TV. Don't forget to hit that like button on the way out and that subscribe button as well. And let me know what you guys think. Until then, bye for now.